our first story today, I thought we'd do something really uplifting. No, seriously, it took Nabil right off his feet. Skydivers jump out of a plane at 10,000 feet above the earth, conquering an innate fear of falling to spend just a few moments feeling like they can fly. It looks terrifying and incredible. I'm not really a big fan of terrifying. Good thing you can totally do it inside now. So I'm heading to Ontario, California to learn how science and engineering come together to let people skydive indoors with STEM educator Stephanie Gomez. What I love about teaching is the interaction with the kids. Just seeing those moments where they actually get to really understand through hands-on activities what science or technology, engineering, and math is all about. Today, Stephanie's teaching me the science behind indoor skydiving and how taking flight inside a building starts with the building. Indoor skydiving, how, how does that even work? Between all of the architects, the engineers, we have found a way to make air inside of a tunnel, inside of a building that allows us to fly. Wait, you're saying the building is a part of the tunnel? The building is the tunnel. So I imagine it has to be a pretty powerful fan if people are able to fly in it. So we have two on one side, two on the other. And when you're in the flight chamber, the speed can go up to 160 miles per hour. Now you won't fly at that today, <laughs> I promise. We, we won't do that to you. So how is indoor skydiving similar or different from regular skydiving? I mean, are they even the same thing? And that's a really good question. So we have the force of gravity, which is what keeps our feet on the ground, right? When we're skydiving, we have the opposing force, which is called drag. Skydiving, we create it as we fall, because we're moving. Here, we create it by the air as we push it up from the fans. Air could blow you all the way up, gravity's gonna keep you all the way down, but when we balance them, then we have the magic of terminal velocity, and that's when you fly. Terminal velocity is when the force of drag is strong enough to stop you from accelerating due to the force of gravity. Free-falling skydivers will reach terminal velocity, but still descend at a steady rate of around 120 miles an hour. That's why they need the extra drag of the parachute to decelerate enough to land safely. Indoors, the massive fans of the wind tunnel create enough drag so that the flyer's force of weight, which is their mass times acceleration due to gravity, is perfectly balanced. So you get the feeling of free falling without hopping from a plane. This is wild. You've created a building that literally defies the laws of physics. Applies the laws of physics, uh -huh. yes. You know, learning the ins and outs of how this building works, how a wind tunnel works, mm -hmm. is actually making me less nervous. Good. Because I feel like I, if I know the science, what is there to be right. afraid of? Now Stephanie wants to show me how the wind tunnel impacts different objects with the help of indoor skydiving master, Carlos. So there's two main things when we talk about how objects fly in the tunnel. The first one is the frontal area. And frontal area is similar to surface area with the exception of it's only the part that the wind sees. So frontal area is any part of the object that the wind directly touches? Correct. And then the other thing that comes into play is mass based on how much things weigh as well as their frontal area, it will determine their flight order. So Mr. Sloth, with lots of frontal area, will launch before the lighter but smaller wiffle balls. You can't change your weight, right? Right. But as you change your frontal area by changing body posture, you will figure out where and how to fly through the tunnel. So you will see instructors that will fly, speed will stay the exact same but they will start on the ground, they will shoot up, they will go around, they will come down just by how they change their body, which sure. means changing their frontal area. After some aerobatics collecting the balls, they have one more trick for me involving the terminal velocity of water? The water droplets. And right now, as they start to fly, that's your terminal velocity. That's when we have the balance of those two forces. When wind speed gets turned up, they will go up. When the wind speed gets turned down, they come down. Now, it's my time to fly. Carlos teaches me hand signals to communicate, shows me how to position my body to change my frontal area, and gears me up with a suit designed to give me more drag. Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. We start with some simple floating, but after a few minutes, we truly get to soar. 
It's amazing how small changes to our frontal area can alter the balance between gravity and drag to let us rise, fall, and fly. Oh my goodness, that was incredible. Uh -huh. Did you see me? I felt like an action movie star. Thank you so much for an incredible day. Awesome, that's our goal. I mean, I, I would love to stick around, but I think I'm gonna go take off. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a little flight joke for you. Yeah. You ever heard that one before? You know, lots of times. Just never really lands. <gasps> okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> that's pretty good.